Um, if we could all uh, recite the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance, pledge allegiance to the flag, the flag of the United States, States of America, States of America. And, to and to the republic, republic for which it stands, stands. one nation, nation under God, under God, God indivisible, indivisible, with liberty and justice, justice for all. For all. all. Okay, um, roll call please. <laughs> Jim Batson. Here. Don Carmichael. Here. Pat Grudy. Here. Lisa Hessel. Here. Kevin Huber. Here. Karen Lundstedt. Here. Casey Rooney. Here. Okay, everybody's here tonight. Um, our agenda will open it up for public comment. Uh, Mary, any public comment for this meeting? Okay, um, so then we'll just move on. Um, we are going to approve the fiscal year 2021 budget, which we have reviewed multiple times over the last couple of meetings and we reviewed again uh, earlier this evening. Um, we're also going to approve a bid award for the Vernon Hills softball field um, improvement. Uh, and then we're going to convene an executive session to discuss collective negotiating matters. Um, the citation 5 ILCS 120 slash 2C2. Um, when we return to open session, there will be no action tonight arising from that um, executive session. All right? Ready to go? Okay, nothing from public comment. Uh, let's go and talk about the budget. All right. Um, so I'm going to share screen not share can you see yep can you see that okay all right just making sure first hmm. i can see all your lovely faces okay um so this is um just a, a brief presentation overview of the final budget uh, that is included for you, um, that you got many pages over this weekend for. Um, so as a reminder, the way that's structured is the memo, cover memo with some highlighted information, um, then summary reports followed by more detail, more detail, more detail. Uh, so the longer you read, the more detail you get. Um, so this has occurred over several meetings that we've had in several months of planning for it. Um, so with that, I'm going to move. So what are the changes that's happened since the last time we saw this uh, as as a board and even as any community members that may have paid, paid or paid a visit to our 824 um, meeting is on the revenue side, we've updated CPPRT, which is corporate personal property tax. That's a, a money that we received from the Department of Illinois Department of Revenue that was originally replaced a, a personal property tax that existed back in the 70s. And so we had a number of 800,000 in there um, and that was then updated based on uh, the Department of Revenue came out with a precise number uh, for us. And so I put that number in the 788, which is down from the 800,000. Um, so we, we were guessing pretty close there. Um, it's down from the million that we got, for example, last year. So, you know, what we predicted to be happening there seems like it, but this is a more accurate number. So that's the revenue. So very, the only change, that was the only change there. A few more changes on the expenditure side. Uh, the biggest one I would say is the lane change contingency. Um, so we've normally had lane changes. So, you know, teachers, you know, move move with the, the schedule. They're placed on the new schedule this year. And, um, you know, they take their step and all that kind of stuff. Well, the other thing that happens is lane changes where they move over. And so, you know, when we're doing this budget, we don't necessarily know at that time who all is going to make the change. And so essentially what I do is I put a contingency in there based on the lane changes that we've had in the past. And so we've historically clicked around 900,000 to 100,000 lane changes a year. And uh, with our new contract last year, we had uh, a very large utilization I, uh, of about 150,000. Um, so I, you know, that which I informed you all of last year, we were trending higher in that area. Mm -hmm. And this year we're trending even higher. Uh, so this is nearly twice as much as we have typically spent uh, in lane changes. And so, so I needed to adjust for that 
Um, so thank you to Rose uh, for her help and helping me identify that making and helping me make sure I allocate enough money there so I don't run into another problem next year with that. Um, and we might actually have even more than 190,000, but this is uh, this is just the number that I'm that I'm going to plug in for right now. It might it might end up getting closer to 200,000 once once everybody uh, submits all of their information. Um, ESP salary. So I did make an adjustment based on the temporary layoffs uh, that we did. Again, not knowing when they might come back. You know, depending on when we bring more students back. But I did adjust that down. That re that re reflects about 10 percent. Uh, of the reduction of those of those salaries um, for those layoffs, um, the benefits was adjusted. I had not had included yet uh, basic life, accidental death, and dismemberment or um, LTD insurance coverage in there. You know, we had the basics, which were you know medical insurance and dental insurance, but I hadn't had those in there yet. So I added uh, that allocation there. Uh, rounded that number out to 5.5 million when you include medical insurance in there. Um, and then repair and maintenance was adjusted. Both schools actually had more maintenance needs for their driver's ed vehicles um, this, this summer and, you know, later, later in the summer, early fall-ish area. And so uh, we had already adjusted LHS, but between the last meeting in this one, Vernon Hills had the same realization that they had a lot more maintenance needs. And so I upped those to account for that. Um, but that, that is a significant increase for those two areas. But, you know, we're hoping that maybe this is a one-time thing. They sat a lot, you know, in the spring. Um, you know, maybe this is a, a one-off, but also knowing those vehicles getting, you know, a little bit older each year. So maybe more maintenance is required. So those were really the expenditure adjustments. I also did have a shift, real, mostly a shift between Title II, between a purchase service and supply. Uh, I didn't put that on here because that's like not really in much of a net change. It's just a shift from supplies to, or from services to supplies. So um, those are the changes. So here's the final look. So look at all money in, all money out, um, and this is you know what are what is what is actually getting voted on um, total. That's part of the state budget form that you have, which is our official state budget, official budget that we report to the state is our revenues at ninety million five hundred eighty one thousand four hundred dollars, um, and expenditures at one hundred six million eight hundred seventy three thousand seven hundred twenty dollars for a total deficit of 16292320 Now, uh, two big clarifications there is this includes the major capital projects that we're paying fund balance for, and this is how you see that. Um, the, the negative gets paid out of our fund balance. So the major capital projects that we are still finishing up over at Vernon Hills and, you know, working on closing out at LHS, that's, that's the $12.43 million there. And then... Um, the other thing that I added that is technically an expenditure, but it's not really in a lot of your reports because there's a lot more that has to go into this before it happens, but it is on our official budget is 4.5 million of debt service cleanouts. So we have a fund balance, we have a balance in our debt service fund of 4.5 million, but we have paid out all of our debt. And so, you know, to be able to use that money for towards the capital projects, um, it can be a little bit tricky. The cleanest way to do it is um, that you issue basically debt of the 4.5 million, which that money then will, those, those proceeds from issuing that debt go into the capital projects fund. And then you have to pay off that debt. Um, that is technically an expenditure. So that's why it's not a net increase because technically the proceeds from a, from a bond issuance is not considered revenue. Um, it's considered an other source. It's considered something that increases your fund balance, but doesn't technically count as revenue. I know that sounds a little weird and tricky, but that's that's really the state rules. So I have that in there if that's something that we pursue. I don't know. We'd have to do more work to kind of figure out what we would do there. But if I don't put it in and we do move in that direction, I don't want us to run into a problem there. So that's that is included there. So that is all the money, all money in and out. But that I don't think is super helpful for us to know in terms of operating, how are we doing? And so the next slide I think is, uh, while this is certainly important in terms of all the money in, all the money out, what's more important for management purposes is our operating funds. And that's this next slide here. So if you look at our operating funds, so when I, when I remove that big capital project that we're paying out of our fund balance, and if I remove debt service, cause that's, that's not an operating fund either. 
um, we have the other funds we have left. And so that's revenues of 90,543,000, which is a 6.5% increase over over last year's receipts. Um, I'll talk about that in a second. And then operating expenditures at basically 90 million, just under $90 million. So for a total surplus, an operating surplus of $600,000. Now, um, that 600,000, remember what's in there, right? We, we returned a million dollars of fees, right? So we, we intentionally did that. So that's reflected here. Um, and then all those other changes that, we, that we've talked about in previous meetings, those are all reflected here. So um, this is what we're projecting. Um, but again, you know, the, this is a tricky year and pretty difficult to get a good idea of how much we're going to spend on all these things, depending on um, the variance between when we, when we go back in person and how do we do that and what gets involved with that. So the expenditure side is up 5%, and that's pretty close um, to what it would be. Um, you know, the biggest factor in that is going to be our salaries. And, you know, we have, uh, you know, more more teacher staff uh, that was added this year um, wasn't related to the pandemic, but that was part of our sectioning process back in the spring. Um, then placing teachers on the new schedule and the raises that other existing employees are having. Um, so all of that at the 5%, which I think is pretty close at looking at what actually is happening. The revenues increasing at 6.5 is not accurate for the purposes of trying to understand what happened between last year. Um, because, and we've talked about previous meetings, is that timing of um, the timing of property taxes, how that shifted, and that that's essentially the 6.5%. So it, we had a, a timing with property taxes, both in terms of the county giving the option to delay 50% of your first and second installments um, had an effect on our property tax collections, but also a date moved a few days that shifted that into a different fiscal year. And so that had a, a just an honestly an odd, an odd thing in terms of what our budget looks like. It'll all get reflected accurately and it will look more smooth in our financial reports once those are ready. Um, cause they, they take into, cause it's a cool base and it takes all those things into account. Uh, but real, realistically though, our revenues are closer to flat, I would say, um, in a, in really looking at our stuff and especially, you know, considering how much down we're going to be in interest income, which is going to be a significant hit this year. Um, but I'm still pleased that with everything going on in the world that we are still operating, we are not operating at a deficit, which is very, very good news. And the question will be going forward in the future is how long can we sustain that, which is a very important, very important uh, thing that we have to consider. So thankfully, we've been able to sustain that, and the, the task will be to be able to sustain that for the future. So that's always something to keep in mind. So that's the operating funds. So the next steps really is looking at a budget adoption tonight. Um, and, you know, obviously answer any questions if you have. The next steps after this is our tax levy to tackle. And so that would typically be October, November. That is still a timeline I would want to keep, even though we're a little, we're about two weeks behind when we would normally have adopted a budget. But I would not delay our property tax levy discussions. I would still look for that final approval in November. And the reason we do that is because, God forbid, something happens and we cannot get a quorum together in November. We still have December as a backup to file uh, to get the levy approved and filed by the last Tuesday in December by law. So uh, those are really the next steps. And that's what the presentation I have for you. Hey, Dan, one question. If it wasn't for the timing of the property tax revenues, would that operating um, bottom line be a deficit? No. No, okay. No, I'm sorry. I, 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 no, yeah, so when we had talked previously, uh, essentially what I did is that timing effect yeah. I removed as a variable. So okay. this is an accurate representation. Because okay. if, if that didn't happen, then I would have changed another figure that I estimated that would have balanced that out. So this is uh, this is uh, pretty accurate, I would say. Okay, all right, good, sorry. And I, I know I've asked that before, I apologize, I don't remember the answer. No, no problem at all. Okay, any other questions? All right, if not, um, can I ask for a motion to approve the fiscal year 2021 budget as presented? So moved. Second. Any further discussion? All right, hearing none, roll call please. Batson. Aye. Carmichael. Aye. Grudy. Aye. Hessel. Aye. 
Lundstead. Aye. Rooney. Aye. Did you get Huber? Oops. How did I miss him? I'm so sorry. Huber. Uh, aye. <laughs> All right. Thanks, everybody. I'll see you next right. year. Great. Yeah. Right, Dan, great great job. Thanks, Dan. Okay, next. Um, let's see, the bid award for the Vernon Hills softball field. Mark, you want to just give us a – or Mark or Dan, quick overview of that. We just reviewed it about half an hour ago. Yeah, a, a big picture, um, I would say, is, um, you know, every year we look at both buildings and uh, the capital project requests and needs and all that kind of stuff. Um, we, we look at those, Mark looks at those because Mark has his own list of all the stuff that you can't see. And then there's things that people can see and they'll, they'll ask about. So we kind of look at that list. And at the very, very, very top of that list by far is addressing the softball infield um, at Vernon Hills High School. And so this will address that. We've we've had a number of issues in terms of, of water and kind of maintaining that area so that it's able to play for several years. And honestly, it's got the point that we, we need to resolve this and get this done, and this will do that. So that's, that's the big picture, Mark. You can talk about the details of the bids and stuff like that. Okay, thanks, Dan. Um, just a quick uh, overview. Um, we, we went out to bid. Uh, we had uh, 10 contractors uh, come to our pre-bid. We received six bids for the project, um, our lowest bid. Uh, was from uh, Team Real Incorporated out of Union, Illinois. And um, you'll see uh, in your package um, all the bid tallies, uh, a recommendation from SDR Partners uh, to recommend uh, Team Real for the project and also uh, a letter from Team Real acknowledging that their bid, uh, uh, they honor their bid. So we're looking for a board motion to approve um, uh, contract with uh, Team Real for uh, $259,330,000, which includes a $50,000 contingency. So moved. Second. Okay, any further discussion? Um, Not yeah, go ahead. Sorry, I just wanted to mention that this is something that we've talked about for um, all the years that I've been on the board. And I think it came up even before I was on the board. So this has been a long time coming. Um, the other thing, I think, Dan, it was obvious to me what you meant what, when you were talking about Mark's list of things that people can see and can't see. Um, I know you meant that there are things visible to the naked eye and things that are not visible to the naked eye looking at our buildings. Um, but I just wouldn't want anybody to interpret that, that there were things that uh, the public couldn't see like they didn't have access to. So you meant- oh, oh, Yeah, I'm sorry. No, no, any, any, any good facility manager like Mark has a list of all of the mechanical systems and the roof systems that you, it's hard to see and to know when it needs to get replaced to the average person. And so they're, they're charged with keeping a watch on that and, and keeping the list of when we need to take care of our infrastructure, essentially. That's what I meant. Yeah, I didn't mean transparency. That Not at all. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Any other discussion? If not, roll call, please. Carmichael. Aye. Rudy. Aye. Hessel. Aye. Huber. Aye. Lundstedt. Aye. Rooney. Aye. Batson. Aye. All right, motion carries. All right, uh, next, can I have a motion to convene an executive session? Again, the topic tonight, collective negotiating matters, 5 ILCS 120 2 c 2 So moved. Second. Any discussion? If not, roll call, please. Grudy. Aye. Kessel. Aye. Huber. Aye. Lundstedt? Aye. Rooney? Aye. Batson? Aye. Carmichael? All right, motion. Uh, did I hear Don? Aye. Yeah, Carmichael. Okay. Oh, did he say okay. Yeah. Uh, okay, motion carries. All right, so again, we're not going to take any action when we come back. We'll just close out this meeting uh, officially, but we have no action after the uh, executive session tonight. So thanks. Good night, everybody.
Okay. Is there a motion to return back to open session? So moved. So moved. Is there a second? Second. second. All right. Roll call, please. Um, Hessel. Aye. Huber. Aye. Lundstead. Aye. Rooney. Did you say Bassett. Rooney? Or? Did you yeah. say, oh, Rooney? Yep. Aye. Yeah. Sorry. Batson. Aye. Carmichael. Aye. Rudy. Aye. All right, motion carries. Uh, is there a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. All right, roll call, please. Huber. Please, aye. <laughs> Lundstead. Yes. Rooney. Aye. Batson. Aye, aye, aye. Yeah. <laughs> Carmichael. Aye. Rudy. Aye. Hessel. Aye. Thank you. Okay, good. Motion carries. All right, thanks, everybody. Okay, okay good night. Everyone. All right, good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night.